I recently captured this photo with the 1.4 times teleconverter. And to be honest, it's pretty bad, isn't it? So this got me thinking, is it really worth pairing up with the Sony 200 to 600? The very first thing I did was fire up my laptop and open Lightroom. I was immediately taken back to last summer where some of my best shots were taken with the teleconverter. Like this one here, for example, a photo of my all time favorite subject, the great blue heron. The sun had already set behind the trees, so using a tripod and a low shutter speed was essential to capturing a well-exposed image. You can see here that the background is rendered smoothly and out of focus, while maintaining sharpness on the heron and even the rock it stands on. Here's another one. I spent a month trying to photograph a close-up of the belted kingfisher. When I finally got a short window of opportunity, the teleconverter didn't disappoint allowing me to capture this shot on a warm sunny day just before the Kingfisher flew off again. And here's one more, and probably my most popular image of the summer, for obvious reasons. To capture this adorable portrait, I angled my camera up at nearly a 90 degree angle with the sun shining through the tree and backlighting the subject. Despite cropping the image an additional 45%, it still retains its sharpness and detail. So why exactly was my most recent image so bad then? To understand this, we need to dive into the technical details of the teleconverter paired up with the Sony 200 to 600. With the 1.4 times teleconverter attached, this becomes a 280 to 840 millimeter lens. On top of that, you also increase its variable f-stop to f8 and f9, which means there's gonna be a loss of light. Now, one of the main reasons I even wanted the teleconverter in the first place I was curious about its effect on the magnification of the lens. On this lens, it goes from 0.20 to 28 with this attached. Meaning that this setup can reproduce a subject at nearly one third of its actual size on the sensor. To show an example of this, I first took a photo of my bearded dragon without the teleconverter. This was taken at 2.4 meters away, which is roughly the minimum focusing distance of this lens. Then, without moving the camera, I attached the 1.4 times teleconverter to visually show the increased magnification. Keeping in mind that I was shooting through glass, both photos are equally sharp, which is actually pretty impressive. So you might also be wondering about the autofocus and how it performs. Here's a few examples of the autofocus in action on a well-lit day. First, the camera quickly locks onto the bird's eye and captures a sharp image. Next, see how responsive the lens is when it focuses on a nearby frog, then switch to the background and back to the frog again. You can see how quickly the autofocus can adjust in a scenario like this. If those two examples weren't enough, here's a shot of the ruby-throated hummingbird in flight around the feeder. I was able to capture this at 840 millimeters. From my own experience, the setup doesn't generally have any issues locking onto its subject. However, the actual keeper rate of photos does come down. I find this is especially true with a burst of photos of any kind of movement. The camera just doesn't seem to really nail that focus every time. For example, in this series of photos where the wood duck swam by, my camera maintained focus. However, not a single photo was sharp resulting in a complete missed opportunity to capture the perfect shot of a male wood duck. But what do you think? Perhaps this was actually a user error on my part. It's possible that shooting one four hundredth of a second was the wrong call. Before the wood duck swam by, I was capturing sharp images of a Canadian goose. Thankfully, I was able to use the photos as a wide shot and it doesn't look too bad. But just don't crop in, okay? Instagram compression will hide everything. <laughs> Now, of course, that's not the only reason why this setup could potentially take some bad images. Large telephoto lenses like the 200 to 600 on their own already have a hard time with heat distortion and haze in the air. These types of conditions can obscure details in your subject, or it just might make your camera miss focus altogether. So of course, adding a teleconverter into the mix only amplifies these potential issues you could run into in the field. For an example of heat distortion, here's a shot with and without the teleconverter. Notice the details in the duck. They're hardly visible. And if you shift your eyes to the background, the bouquet doesn't render very smoothly. Now, switching over to the image without the teleconverter, the background becomes much smoother. And although the duck is difficult to see in this lighting, there does appear to be sharper details. 
I had one more example of the teleconverter not working that I wanted to share. First, without the teleconverter, the image is clear and sharp. Though it's not macro quality, you can still see the fine details, like the hairs on the spider's arms. Now, in the second clip with the teleconverter attached, I expected to enlarge the spider slightly. However, the result was quite different. The highlights bloom, the overall clarity diminishes, and most of the details seen in the previous clip are now lost. I'm not totally sure what went wrong with this one, but I thought I would share it anyways. Now, in my original review of this, I mentioned that shooting at f10 or f11 could help produce sharper images and maybe cut through the haze and heat distortion. This does hold true, however, it's definitely not the ultimate fix. And interestingly enough, the photos at the start of this video were actually shot at f9, which does show this combination can be sharp wide open. Anyways, although the teleconverter may have caused me to miss out on a photo of the wood duck this spring, I still won't completely disregard it because I have captured some great photos in the past. So if you're wondering if you should pair one of these up with your Sony 200 to 600, there's a few things you should keep in mind. Overall, this setup complicates casual photography. It requires the perfect weather conditions and more patience from the user. Additionally, you can expect to have to do some post-processing to get the most out of your images. So if you value convenience and minimal post-processing, pairing up a 1.4x teleconverter with your Sony 200 to 600 might not be the right choice. I really hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. If you did, why not check out the Wood Duck video I posted the other day? Or I have a whole library of content to watch. Tons of wildlife adventures. Anyways guys, I hope to see you in the next one.